More than 100,000 children in Tigray, Ethiopia, could suffer from life-threatening severe acute malnutrition in the next 12 months, a tenfold jump over annual uh, average levels. That's according to the UN Children's Fund UNICEF on Friday. UNICEF spokeswoman uh, Maxi Makado, speaking after returning from Tigray, said that one in two pregnant and breastfeeding women screened in the northern region was acutely malnourished, leaving them and their babies prone to sickness. As UNICEF reaches areas of Tigray that were inaccessible in past months due to insecurity, our worst fears about the health and well-being of children in that conflicted region of northern Ethiopia are being confirmed. UNICEF estimates that over 100,000 children in Tigray could suffer from life-threatening severe acute malnutrition in the next 12 months, a tenfold increase compared to the average annual caseload. It has been more than two weeks since, since a WFP-led convoy met its way to Mekele in Tigray. Um, a convoy of over 200 trucks is on its way now from Semera to Mekele. Um, this is a drop in the ocean. We need at least 100 trucks to be making their way every day into Tigray if we are to stand a chance to reverse the catastrophic situation which you have, which you have had today. We can say that this communication equipment is only for humanitarian purposes um, in a neutral, independent, impartial manner in order to carry out our, our operations. We need satellite phones, for example. We need that communication equipment uh, to go in. So uh, we don't know why that is not happening. We can only say we need this and we need those uh, permissions, please. Okay, we're now being joined uh, by journalists from T. Gray. Uh, Tikle Gabriel Michael, based in Sweden. Hi, Tikle. Hello. Hello. Thanks for joining us on News Now. My pleasure. Thank you. Um, so, uh, looking at looking at uh, the conflict, it started uh, on November four when Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed ordered a military offensive against regional forces in Tigray. Right. Now, why do African leaders seem to have little consideration for dialogue in solving problems? Well, that is a profoundly important and relevant uh, question, and I'm, I'm sure it's one that deserves investigation and research. Um, but I think um, you can't help but wonder if um, there is a lack of conviction, conviction among uh, African leaders um, that they could solve um, African problems despite the sloganeering that we hear every now and then. They have this famous uh, slogan that they call African solutions uh, for African problems. But actually, you, you never see them uh, actually believing and going about and doing practical um, job to, to actually solve African uh, problems. So there is that. There is a lack of conviction. There is, you hear platitudes and, and slogans and stuff but you don't really see African problems engaging in, in solving African uh, problems. So that could be one factor. Uh, the other factor uh, uh, could be, or at least a possible explanation. Uh, they say uh, people who live in, in, in glass uh, houses it's don't throw stones. stones at each other. And th there is um, a tendency to, to fear, uh, to interfere in other countries' affairs because they fear that tomorrow it would be th their turn. And therefore, they, they tend to shy away from, from other people's issues, from other leaders' issues, um, for fear of themselves. So that could also be an, another factor. And um, I think the other is that there is very generally a tendency to believe uh, government talking points in Africa. So whenever the Ethiopian government or the Abu regime gives an account of what is happening in Ethiopia, you sense a tendency among African leaders to totally buy that story and to, to say everything is okay okay, the grass is green and that there's nothing that could be done. But either way, I'm sure there could be other explanations, but the one thing that can't be denied is the African leaders and the African organizations, and especially the African Union, um, has been an utter source of shame and, um, and humiliation for, for the last 
uh, eight months or nine months in the face of atrocities uh, being committed in, in, in Tigray. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, uh, after almost three decades of holding power, after almost three decades of holding power, what again does the Tigris dominant political party, the People's Liberation Front, want? Well, I think I, I would uh, push down on the on the allegation that the TPLF had dominated um, uh, Ethiopian politics for, for the last uh, 30 years. Maybe you, you view a we need a, a bit of context. So what happened is uh, Ethiopia was being ruled by, by a military hunter from 19, um, uh, I think from 1974 until 1991 when the TPLF almost single-handedly toppled the regime and brought about a, a change and um, constituted a, a, a constitution and a federal system that people in, in a derogatory manner called the ethnic-based federalism. Um, so due to the, the, the manner with which the, the system was created, there was an inevitable um, kind of dominance by the TPLF. But other than that, there wasn't anything systemic or systematic that was built in the system that, that allowed the TPLF to dominate. And in fact, Ethiopia uh, was ruled by, by the EPRDF, which was a coalition of four parties, um, of whom the TPLF was only one. And the TPLF was, uh, at least on paper, in charge of the Tigray region, which has been at war now. And the, the Oromos were being governed by, by, by a party that represented the Oromos, and the same applied to the Amharas, and the same applied to, to other ethnic uh, minorities, uh, although I wouldn't want to use that, that term. Uh, but generally, there wasn't, um, the, the TPLF wasn't as, as dominant as people would have you uh, believe. But in terms of what the TPLF wants now, the TPLF probably is the only party now in Ethiopia that is demanding that the constitution be respected, that the constitution be upheld, that um, whatever uh, dispute or, or disagreement that there are in the country, there should be a political dispensation in the country rather than a resort to, to military confrontation, which is what, has, what the, the government has um, uh, preferred to, to, to do. So the demand, uh, as far as the TPLF is concerned, is that the constitution should be upheld, uh, that the constitution should be the supreme um, law of the land rather than the whim of a single person, which, which is the, the case today. But okay, now, particularly, we're, we're talking about the uh, upholding the constitution, which, which is a brilliant idea, if you ask me. But then it was anti-government protests that helped sideline Tigris' dominant political party, uh, the People's Liberation Front, uh, TPLF, in 2018. Looking at antecedents, uh, well, doesn't it look like the citizens have more confidence in restiveness than in peaceful resolution? Well, absolutely. I think you, you will have to look a little bit deeper into why the, the people um, demonstrated and protested against the regime in, in 2018. Uh, the, the, the regime was uh, doing um, poor in terms of um, the, the economy and the other aspects, and people grew uh, disillusioned in, in terms of where the country was going. So it wasn't, it wasn't that they had a problem with the TPLF per se, although that is how it has been narrated now. But the people wanted a, a change in terms of job opportunities and other, other, um, uh, and other aspects. And um, the, the TPLF was pretty much one of the main drivers behind bringing about the change. They, they were saying, okay, we, 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 have, we have got something fundamentally wrong and we needed a, a change of direction. And the TPLF was advocating to, to bring about change. And when the change came in terms of Abiy um, um, becoming the, the prime minister, the understanding was that a new uh, charter would be uh, formulated, that he would serve as the kind of transitional leader, uh, and Ethiopia would become more democratic, there would be more uh, press freedom, and there would be other um, fundamental changes. So that was why he was entrusted uh, the, 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 the task. But what happened was he disbanded the, the party that elected him yeah. and he created kind of one man system. Okay. And um, that's what happened. Thank you, Tikle. Tikle, you make it very difficult to stop a conversation. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your time. We, we, we should get back to you in, in the coming days. Thank you. Hello. 
Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.